Hello, in this video, I will be presenting an efficient adaptive partial snapshot implementation for the annual ACM Symposium on Principle of Distributed Computing 2021. My name is Benjamin Beshari. I'm a master's student at the University of Calgary, and this is a joint work with my supervisor, Philip Wolfel. First, I will present a short summary of our work followed by an introduction to the adaptive partial snapshot and its applications. Then, I will talk about the object that we implemented, and at the end, I go through the possible future works. In an asynchronous shared memory system with n processes, single writer snapshot objects provide consistent views of n memory components while the contents are concurrently being changed by processes. Clearly, under realistic assumptions about the object size, taking a snapshot of such memory takes at least omega of n steps. However, in several applications of the snapshot type, a process doesn't need to read the entire memory. Capturing a consistent view of k-memory components suffices. We devised an object that allows a process to adaptively read a consistent view of k-memory components in order of k log n. Adaptively means that this process doesn't require to read all of the k components at the same time. It can choose what component to read next based on the information it gained by reading the previous component. In here, we see an example of such procedure. A process first reads the zeroth component, then, based on the value of the zeroth component, it decides to read the third component, and so on. Note that all of the k components that this process reads belongs to a consistent view of the memory. Formally, a snapshot object maintains an array of m elements and supports two operations. Update of i and v, which sets the value of the i-th component to v, and scan, which returns the view of the entire array. In the single writer snapshot object, the number of components is equal to the number of processes, and process p can only update the value of the pth component. We extended the definition of the snapshot type to the adaptive partial snapshot that supports three operations, update, scan, and observe. Update of i and v is identical to the snapshot type and changes the i-th component of the array to v. However, a scan doesn't return anything and its behavior is defined in terms of another operation, observe. An observe q operation by process p returns the value that the q-th component of A had at the point in time of P's preceding scan. Identical to the snapshot type, an adaptive partial snapshot is single writer. If the number of components is equal to the number of processes, and a process can only update its corresponding component. The figure below is an example execution of a single writer adaptive partial snapshot object. In this execution, process P first updates its component to V of P, then process Q updates its component to V of Q, and after that, process R performs a scan operation. After the scan, process P performs another update operation and changes its value to V prime of P, and then process R performs observe of P and observe of Q operations consecutively. Since the value of the pth and the qth component of A at the point in time of the preceding scan of these two observe operations are v of p and v of q respectively, the observe p operation returns v of p and observe q operation returns v of q. In the implementation of our single writer adaptive partial snapshot object, we use single writer predecessor objects. A predecessor object maintains a set of key value pairs such that the keys belong to a totally ordered set. This object provides two types of operations. Modify operations, which includes insert and remove, and query operations, which includes predecessor and successor. The definition of insert and remove are straightforward. A predecessor of k returns the greatest pair with key less than or equal to k, and a successor of k returns the smallest pair with key greater than k. 
in a single writer version, only one process may perform modify operations. He implemented a single writer adaptive partial snapshot object using order of n cube log n single word compare and swap, fetch and increment, and registers, in which the time complexity of a scan is order of 1, and update and observe is order of log n. One of our main contribution is using single word based objects in our implementations. I will explain more about this in the next slide about related works. We also implemented an efficient single writer predecessor object with bounded capacity delta, which means that at any point in time the number of pairs in a predecessor object should be less than delta. This implementation is bounded memory and the time complexity of each operation is order of log delta. In this video, I only present our adaptive partial snapshot algorithm. The concept of the partial snapshot type was introduced by Atia, Gurui, and Rupert. They implemented a multi-writer non-adaptive partial snapshot object that supports reading R memory locations in order of R squared. However, the step complexity of an update operation in their implementation is unbounded. A recent paper from Wei, Ben David, Beleluk, Faturu, Rupert, and Son implemented an adaptive multi writer partial snapshot type using single word object with a step complexity of O of 1 per update. Nevertheless, the step complexity of reading a memory location in their implementation increases with the number of updates on that location and therefore is unbounded. As you can see in the following table, our object is the only bounded weight-free partial snapshot implementation. Apart from the partial snapshot implementations, there are theoretical snapshot objects that provide consistent views of the entire memory in a polylogarithmic step complexity using only registers. As I explained earlier, this is impossible under realistic assumptions. These objects uses registers that stores order of n values. In our work, we use a stronger primitives such as compare and swap that stores order of 1 values. Now, I'm going to talk about two applications of the adaptive partial snapshot type. The first application is performing query operations on a concurrent binary search tree. Consider a process that wants to perform a find 8 operation in the concurrent binary search tree below. First, this process performs a scan operation to obtain a consistent view of the tree. Next, it uses an observe operation to see the value of the root, which in this case is 4. Since the process looks for 8, it chooses the right child to continue. Then, it reads the value of the right child and sees that it is 6. Therefore, it decides to continue by going right again. This process continues to observe the value of the nodes one by one adaptively until the find 8 operation finishes. It is clear that an adaptive partial snapshot object allows this process to only read a path instead of the entire tree. The next application of the adaptive partial snapshot type is in error recovery systems. Usually in these systems, we should take a snapshot of the entire memory every once in a while. As long as there is no error, we continue performing operations on this system. However, when an error occurs, the system must roll back to the most recent backup. With the adaptive partial snapshot type, a scanning the system can be implemented in a time-efficient manner. Therefore, we only need to read the entire memory when an error occurs in the system. Now, I will discuss our adaptive partial snapshot object. Recall that in the specification of the adaptive partial snapshot type, an update operation by process queue changes the value of the queued component, and an observe queue operation by P returns the value that the queued component had at the point in time of P's preceding the scan. This is a sequential specification. I'm going to rephrase this specification in terms of linearization points. Assume that the red crosses show the linearization points of operations. 
Consider the observe operation by process P. In this operation, P returns the value of the Qth component at the linearization point of its preceding scan. In other words, to determine the return value of this observe operation, we need to find the last update operation by process Q that is linearized before the preceding scan of P, which in this case is update of V2. Therefore, P returns V2 in the observe operation. Now, let's see how we can achieve this. The key idea is to give unique positive integers to each scan and update operation in a way that if we order the operations based on these numbers, the resulted sequential history preserves happens before order. The assigned number to an operation shows the relative point in time that this operation occurs. In the following example, considering that each update and scan operation has a unique number with such condition, the work of the observe operation is trivial. In that operation, process P first sees that the number of its preceding scan is 4, then it looks through the update operations by process Q to find the last update that has a number less than 4. In this case, update of V2 has number 3, therefore P returns V2 in the observe operation. But how can we assign unique numbers to each scan and update operations? The answer is using an atomic fetch and increment object. Consider the red crosses as the points in time that P or Q fetched a number from the fetch and increment object. Since we are using these numbers to change the concurrent history to a sequential one, we should also use the red crosses as the linearization points of update and scan operations. Now that we know how to assign numbers, it remains to show how an observe operation can find the previous update that has a number less than 4. The idea is simple. Whenever process Q performs an update V operation, after it fetched a number X from the fetch and increment object, it inserts pair XV to a predecessor object. For example, in this execution, the predecessor object of Q has seven pairs, 1, V0, 2, V1, and so on. So in the observe operation by process P, first P sees that the assigned number to its preceding scan is 4. Then it searches through the predecessor object of Q to find the predecessor of number 4, which is the largest pair with key less than 4. In our example, this pair is 3, V2. Therefore, P returns V2 in the observe operation. Unfortunately, this simple solution doesn't work for all possible executions. Consider the following example. Process Q performs two update operations with the assigned numbers 1 and 2 respectively. Then it performs another update operation, fetches number 3 from the fetch and increment object, and falls asleep before doing anything else. In the meanwhile that Q is sleeping, Process P performs a scan, fetches number 4, and then performs an observe operation. Since process Q is sleeping throughout this whole interval, during the observe operation, the predecessor object of process Q only has two pairs, 1 V0 and 2 V1. Now process P sees that the assigned number to its preceding scan is 4, it looks for the predecessor of 4 in the predecessor object of process Q and finds 2v1 as the result which is not correct, because the value of the qth component at P's preceding scan is v2, not v1. To solve this issue, in the observe operation by process P, P first helps process Q to complete its update operation and after that it searched through the predecessor object of process Q. This implementation is a linearizable implementation of the single writer adaptive partial snapshot type. However, the time complexity of operations are not bounded weight free because during each update operation by Q, the size of its predecessor object increases by one. Therefore, performing operations on that predecessor object requires unbounded steps. To overcome this problem, 
we need to prune the predecessor object of process Q. Consider the following example with three processes P, Q, and R. The assigned number to the scan operation of process P is 5, and the assigned number to the scan operation of process R is 2. Therefore, the observed Q operation by process P looks for the largest pair with key less than 5 in the predecessor object of process Q, which is 4, V2, and the observed Q operation by process R looks for the largest pair with key less than 2, which is 1, V0. So they return V2 and V0 respectively. Consider the current time of execution at the end of the observed Q operation by process P. Note that before the current time, 8 is fetched from the fetch and increment object. So it is clear that if process P or process R performs a scan operation after the current time, their assigned numbers will be greater than 8, and therefore their predecessor in the predecessor object of Q will not be any pair with key less than 8. So at the current time, we can remove every pair from the predecessor object except 1v0, 4v2, and 8v5. In this example, I only consider the scan operations of two processes, P and R. If we extend this to n processes, there are at most n plus 1 pairs in the predecessor object of process Q, that cannot be removed at the current time. We implemented a prune operation that always keeps the number of pairs in a predecessor object in order of n. In conclusion, we implemented an adaptive partial snapshot object using bounded number of single word compare and swap, fetch and increment, and registers. The time complexity of update and observe is dominated by their operation on a predecessor object. Since each predecessor object has at most order of n pairs, the time complexity of update and observe is order of log n. Also, the time complexity of a scan is order of 1. The first step in the future works is to bound the memory by replacing the fetch and increment object with a bounded timestamp object. The next step is to change the algorithm from single writer to multi writer. And at last, we can further extend this object to support the snapshots of a stronger primitives such as compare and swap. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it.